Välkomna hit. Vi ska prata om en utställning som heter Embrace som öppnar på utvandrarnas hus i september, den 14 september när man har bestämt. Och vilka vi är som sitter här i studion. Jag heter Erika Monson och är vd i Kulturparken Småland som bland annat driver Smålands museum. Och med mig här i studion så har jag Pia Schelin. Hej, mitt namn är Pia Schelin och jag har emigrerat i... Yeah, we we might switch to English now because okay. it's better it's to have it. For me. Yeah. I emigrated to America 37 years ago. Uh, I was educated in uh, Orefors mm -hmm. Glass School and after that I went to Kusta for engraving. And I've uh, done a lot of different arts. I've painted, I've done clothes, I have had two galleries and uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Li Xuan An. My name is Li Xuan An, and uh, I am Chinese. I'm an American, and I'm now becoming Swedish. I moved from China when I was 16 years old to America, and spent the next 25 years in America. And since 2009, my family and I moved to Växjö, in this beautiful part of the world. And since then. I'm learning how to become Swedish. <laughs> it's not too easy. So. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, the exhibition Embrace, do you want to tell a little about the background to Embrace exhibition? Mm. Uh, Embrace is a art and culture exhibition, but more importantly Embrace is a social engagement uh, towards the kind of future society we wish to live in. Uh, and we say that embrace is a common dream. We dream of a day when all people, regardless of origin, race, religion, or political affiliation, can live harmoniously and lovingly together. That is the dream and the, and the vision of embrace. Uh, embrace be began as um, kind of a, uh, a, a unofficial culture study that I took upon myself uh, when I moved to Sweden for the second time as an immigrant. And um, I think that once again living life as an immigrant brought back a lot of memories of the immigrant journey of my youth, which is the move from China to America. And it, uh, obviously that move brought on, gave me a new life and new adventures. Uh, but at the same time, there were also uh, difficulties and challenges that I had to overcome, which we will talk more about. And I think these are the challenges that many immigrants face. Uh, regardless whether you're moving from one country to another. When we, when we use the word immigrant, we use it very much loosely to include all people that move from one station in life to another, whether from small town to a big city, from rural to urban, from one socioeconomic class to another. Uh, the, the journey is very similar in that we need to find belonging and acceptance and, and, and be, be, uh, feel that we're part of something greater than ourselves. And that struggle sometimes uh, can last a lifetime. Mm. And how is this connected to the exhibition? This is uh, actually some more like an existential mm. uh, question, but if you can explain what, and how can this get to be an exhibition? Well, uh, a year ago, you asked me if I would help to uh, pick out some of the artists in America. And uh, also we looked through all the, all the art and we all have um, a story at the immigrant's house. The old story of uh, all the Swedes who left uh, in the late 1800s, mid 1800s and their struggle because they had to leave Sweden. Uh, a lot of them were starving and uh, there was not necessarily because of war but they could not manage to stay here and uh, many of the art that we are showing now is uh, in, um, all the Swedish artists that lived in America long time ago and uh, 
Then we also have immigrants uh, that have moved to America um, that are living in the States now, Swedish people. And for me, uh, I think I've always wanted to show artists. And I've had a dream about uh, showing American artists in Sweden and Swedish artists in, in America. I had no idea that it's going to be Swedish artists living in America coming here. But I'm very honored to, to show these uh, world famous artists. And I hope you all can come to see the new art and the old art and the history of the, the immigration, which many Swedish people might not know. Mm. For me, um, uh, when I moved to Sweden from New York City, uh, as we know, New York City is a world city in which people that, uh, from all walks of life and all parts of the world come together and make a new life um, side by side. And in New York City, uh, there is no such thing as the, the concept of melting pot. People don't go to New York City to melt into one. We go to New York City because it's a place that allows all of us uh, to be who we are and to uh, bring with us our unique history and culture heritage and our talent. Uh, it is that, that diversity that makes New York so magnificent for all people who have come in contact with. Um, and But before I got to New York City, uh, I spent uh, five years in Texas, where, um, of course, there were many great things about life in Texas. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, in the 1980s in Texas, there was tremendous amount of discrimination, uh, particularly racial discrimination, uh, which, of course, was very, very difficult. So discovering New York City gave me new hope as an immigrant in America that I could find a place where I belonged and where I would accept someone of a different color and origin. And then moving to Sweden, um, I recognized that here we are in a country that went from uh, being a very homogenous society with sort of a dominant culture and one type of people to today, close to 18% of the population in Sweden are of foreign origin. Yet, you can see that we're not really mixed the same way as what I'm used to from my 20 years in New York City. And so it became very interesting to investigate what keeps us apart. But before we investigate that, I think it's very important to start from a place of sameness. It's like the analogy of, uh, of, of looking at the glass half full or looking at a glass half empty. There's an American saying which says, if you change your thought, you change your world. And if we look at one another and we start from a place of difference, that is going to affect our attitudes and our behavior towards each other. But if we begin from a place of similarity, then we, that gives us more opportunities to relate and to embrace one another. So when, Erika, when you came and talked to us about doing an exhibition in the Utvandranas Hus, P and I realized right away, perhaps because of our immigrant experience, experiences, we realized right away what a perfect vehicle to launch a greater discussion about race, harmony, society, integration, these kind of very important topics but bring art because art and culture help to drive people's relationships. And so for that reason, we chose, for the contemporary artists, we chose first generation, as Pia said, first generation immigrants. So that in addition to the wonderful artwork that they're sharing with us, they're also sharing it with us their immigrant story and their narrative and their, their experiences of what it's like. How, how that move to America influences who they are and alters their identity and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And there's also other pe persons involved in this exhibition, uh, like school, children in school mm -hmm. and things like other organizations. Can you tell a little bit about that? Sure. Um, as I said before, Embrace is so much more than uh, a, a, an art exhibition. 
it is a, I think it's, we, we had always hoped that it would be the, the little spark that would ignite the forest fire. Because in order to achieve sustained, sustainable changes in society, first of all, it takes a long time. But more importantly, it takes collaboration amongst all people. Um, uh, and uh, we wanted to reach out to all kinds of individuals and organizations and bring them uh, towards this common goal. And in doing so, we are, we are more united as people and we have more opportunities to learn about one another. So some examples, uh, we, dis we discovered uh, uh, clearly uh, recognizing that there is this thing called segregation here uh, uh, in, I don't know about other cities in Sweden, my experience of Sweden is based in Vekor, but in Vekor we have segregation. We have one school in particular called Bokolung Skolan, where uh, essentially 100% of the students are of immigrant backgrounds. And if our children are not meeting one another and becoming friends and, and truly sharing life, then it paints the kind of future that I think that would be detrimental and the opposite of the vision of the kind of society we wish to create. So we felt that it was very important, for example, to begin bringing children together. So now we have seven schools mm -hmm. that are working together where children can meet uh, and tell stories about each other and become buddies. And, uh, and they're also participating in a very beautiful project, which we call the FLAG project. These children, while getting a meeting one another, they're also um, practicing a wonderful tradition of handicraft, which in this case is sewing by hand. And they're sewing these beautiful flags. Uh, whether it's, rep uh, it's a flag of country where they came from, or it could be a fantasy flag based on colors they like, or it could be that together they, do, they want to learn about a different country. So they sew these flags that will ultimately be sewn into a three meter by four meter lapteke. And this piece uh, is a very strong symbol of the multicultural diversity of Sweden today. And this piece will be unveiled uh, hopefully at the opening. <laughs> the kids are really working hard on mm -hmm. it right now. And we plan to unveil it at the opening and it will be hung permanently in the Great Hall in the Ute van Rana's Hus. Mm. What, what more will happen on the Great Opening? On the 14th of September, it will be the Great Opening mm -hmm. of Embrace exhibition. What more? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, an another thing that I have always wondered since I was a little kid, is all these fighting between religions and uh, um, a lot of wars have happened and somebody blames the mm. Jewish, the Christian, the Muslims, and they hide under a religion. And my search have always been for the truth. I've uh, gone through healing school and started to understand that we are all one and we might have differences of, of opinion but it is about energy and information or consciousness, or whatever you want to call it, if you want to call it Allah or God, we are all would love to have a more loving society. And so we have something fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so on, uh, uh, one of the motivations for me personally to do Embrace is, is actually to show the world what a beautiful country Sweden is, and what a wonderful group of people, Swedish people are. Uh, the, the, because uh, when you came to, to meet with me uh, back in 2009, or was it 2010, <laughs> I can't keep track, 2010, um, it was just right after the parliamental election where Swedish Democrats uh, gained uh, power in the parliament. And I could sense a shift in the emotions uh, in the general at atmosphere, uh, particularly amongst my Swedish friends, that there was a great deal of frustration, uh, uh, shame, embarrassment, and confusion as to whether or not we, Sweden, is a racist country. 
And to that, I really had a very strong desire to say to the world, I have experienced discrimination, and this is not it. This is not discrimination. What the differences are based on more of our different culture heritage. For example, um, in many cultures, being close to each other is a sign of respect. So we're holding hands, we're hugging, we're touching. In Sweden, it seems that sort of being a little bit, giving space is a sign of respect. And now making eye contact. It took me a while to understand why people don't make eye contact on the street and say hello. But then I learned that part of the Swedish culture teaches that it's sort of rude to stare at other people. So I think it's so important to learn about the culture before we make judgment about people's behavior. Because we can, uh, if not, lots of misunderstandings can, 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 uh, can take place. Um, so with that said, uh, the Embrace opening, uh, which is happening in two weeks mm -hmm. uh, on <laughs> September 14, um, it is a day when we celebrate human equality in a, in, in a nutshell. It's a day where we celebrate, uh, embrace one another, and love one another. We will begin with a um, we will begin with a short ceremony in front of the the Stadsbibliothek, and then we will walk. Uh, young people, old people, Swedish people, new Swedish people, uh, uh, any uh, uh, background and uh, religion or culture or otherwise, uh, and together with, and this is the beautiful thing, together with the Bishop of Växjö and the Imam of Ekor and the rabbi from Stockholm, three religious leaders of uh, three of the biggest religions in the world, as Pia said, if uh, these three religions can come together as they will at this, the embrace opening, perhaps we can avoid many wars in the world. And if uh, anyone wants to have a free ticket to embrace, so you can get one at Macken because we have uh, put a lot of free tickets and you need this one and you're very welcome all to come on the 14th of September. Mm. Mm. And we're also going to do some workshops. Uh, I'm going to bring in the American talking stick, mm -hmm. which uh, if we sit in the ring, we have this uh, stick and we we are the, the person who holds the stick is the only one who can talk. I pass it to Lishuan and she might not have anything to say and it goes around and next time she might be shy which she isn't but <laughs> <laughs> she might be. Not and most of the time. No. <laughs> but, but the second time around she might have a comment on, on Erika's uh, what she has said and I think it is important to give everybody a voice. Yes to be able to have a chance to say what they feel and it does doesn't maybe it doesn't uh, you know everybody agree with it but at least they have a chance to talk about it and it could be a discussion without screaming and everybody be listening to mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to talk oh at the opening we forgot to mention that we'll also have about 10 artists who are coming from America to mm -hmm. join the opening and, and there will be many uh, activities that they will partake in, be it uh, discussions or seminars and, and lectures and what have you. So that's also extremely yeah. exciting. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, the, 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 we talked about similarities, how um, just 150 years ago, one, one fifth of the uh, population from s in Sweden had to leave for America in order for an opportunity for a better life. And so there's tremendous parallel between that migration to the migration to Sweden today. But what's interesting about the contemporary immigration of Swedish people to America uh, and versus the contemporary migration to Sweden, to Sweden today, I think there's a, big, a major difference, uh, which is that for the most part, the contemporary Swedish immigrants, they have a choice. 
they don't have they they, they, they don't have to choose between one uh, between two countries. They can have a foot in Sweden and a foot in America. This is something that we discovered in our works with these artists when we interviewed them and visited them and talked to them. And that's a tremendous luxury that many other immigrants do not have. I can relate to the, the journey of no return. In 1984, uh, when, I, uh, when I moved from China to America at the age of 16, uh, that was very early in the opening of China in terms of letting people migrate. In those days, if you were quote unquote lucky enough to go to America, it was understood that that should be a one-way journey, that there would be no return. And the, the, the lack of possibility to return to your homeland, I think, has tremendous impact on the individual because there is a cutoff, a very clear cutoff, when you board that plane that you now have left everything you've ever known and the way you behave and you dress and speak and everything about you, you have left that behind and you must learn everything new. Language, mannerism, what's considered appropriate conduct. For example, before I left, I remember my mother gave me a lesson at home how to use utensils, mm -hmm. knife and fork, because we never used knife and forks. We used chopsticks all our lives. She had to teach me how to use knife and forks. And he pu she put a book on my head and made me walk in the room, because apparently in America, you have to walk very tall and very straight. But when we had come from China, especially coming out of Cultural Revolution, we were always a little bit in hiding. You know, We don't want to stand out so much. So these small things that we take fr for granted play a significant role in a new immigrant's life. And that is more or less the reality of a, a very big majority of the immigrants to Sweden today. They have no way home. This is their home from, from this point on. And then do we not then, as people, uh, especially as I consider very wonderful people, um, don't we have a responsibility to help ensure that this will be an accepting and welcoming home for all those new Swedes that are here today. I think um, what you said relates very much to the immigrants in the old days. Yes. Because they also left, mm -hmm. and uh, since they had to take a very long journey and, and leave, they, could, they did not know the language, mm -hmm. they, they made uh, mm -hmm try to fit in, mm. by clothes, mm. by way of being, mm. and um, you know, going into a world, world that was uh, very unknown. Yeah, very unknown. And, um, and a tremendous, and a yeah. very harsh journey yeah. to get there. Yes. And that is, all, that is very much the reason why we felt that it was very important before people got to the exciting parts of the, all the beautiful artwork that we should take a, a historic walk through the permanent uh, exhibition of the immigrant history because that history gives us perspective in our discussions and our thinking today about essentially how to deal with, how to become a, an embracing and multicultural society, to, to, to see that, wow, we're not so different uh, from one another. Uh, even though there's a time and a place that are different, but ultimately it's the same human condition of, of looking for ways to create a good life for oneself and one's loved ones. Yeah, I think it's also very hard for us to understand people who are coming from war countries, that uh, leaving, uh, you know, having all of these really, really sad stories and not being able to, you know, meet up with the families again because they're not even alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's important for, for the children to get together and tell their stories and not lose the stories. Mm, that is really something we de did in Kulturpark and that has been broadcast here at Öppna Kanalen as well, I think. Mm -hmm. 
um, migration stories mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. interviews with mm -hmm. uh, newcomers mm -hmm. to, to Småland. So mm -hmm. that is, will be a part of exhibition mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But at, at last, uh, if you want to say just one sentence about how do you feel, how do you want the visitor to feel when he or she is leaving the exhibition, what kind of feeling would it be in the, in, in the heart of the visitors when they have run through all the exhibition and maybe take part of some, something? <laughs> Hopefully that they can invite each other to dinners and mm. party and have a good time yeah. and, uh, and also understand each other a little bit more. Mm. And for me, I think that having uh, experienced different cultures and experiencing different cultures essentially from scratch uh, several times, um, what I want to say, and that's based on my own experience, is that no matter what we look like on the outside, no matter what language we speak, and no matter what our habits and what holidays we celebrate, or to which God we pray, we're all the same. We're human beings, and we have given this wonderful opportunity for this thing called life. In itself, is a magnificent event, and we have a very short amount of time on this planet. Why don't we love each other instead of fighting each other? Ja, vi tackar så mycket. Vi tackar Lishuan An och tackar också Pia Schelin som är gästkuratorer då i projektet Embrace. Och vi hälsar alla välkomna till invigningen av Embrace i Växjö på Utvandrarnas hus 14 september. Och delar av utställningen, eller rättare sagt andra utställningar, visas också i Alvesta på utställningshallen på järnvägsstationen. Och där är öppningen den 22 september. Och eh, utställningen på Ljungbergmuseet i Ljungby öppnar den 1 oktober.